Welcome back to the Scrapyard Guys, Rostronic here, and we are back with a new series where I invite a content creator from a different game to come and have a look at Marvel Snap, give me their thoughts and opinions. Today we've got Crimson Panda. Hello, say hello Crimson Panda. Hey, what's on guys? Crimson Panda here. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> intro, appreciate it. Crimson Panda, do you want to give the audience a little bit of an idea of what kind of content you make and, and, and how you make it and things like that? Absolutely. So I am a Hearthstone Mercenary player. I used to play Standard quite frequently. Um, but then as soon as Hearthstone Mercenaries came out, I thought this is something new and exciting. So I jumped straight onto the Mercenary scene. Unfortunately, the launch of Mercenaries didn't go so great. So um, a lot of player base dropped off. But I thought I was going to be persistent and I stuck with it. And luckily, it's on its way up getting a little bit more popularity than it has seen and um yeah it's in a currently in a good spot so if you guys feel free to check out my channel and see where it's at at the moment it's uh probably in the best place it's been since launch um other than on day one of launch where it just flew past battlegrounds and every other card game there was um but yeah it's definitely on the way up so it is an exciting game to play so feel free to check that out yeah nice and i, I said it to you before the call so i actually did jump on that mercy's bandwagon for a couple of days i'll be honest with you i've only got room in my uh in my life for one game at a time or one sort of like ongoing free-to-play multiplayer pvp style game but um, I do like the idea. I know it was kind of pitched as almost like this Slay the Spire-esque, but then, you know, PvE, if you want PvE, but then there's PvP. And I know they made a lot of changes recently uh, as well, or, or have been making changes regularly. I also like the fact that you don't actually have to play Hearthstone at all or know how Hearthstone works. It's like a completely separate mode where, where knowledge of the actual card game is not required. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you don't need to have played Hearthstone at all to play Mercenaries. Hmm. Unfortunately, there is a real big grind aspect of it. So so if you don't have a lot of time, it is unfortunately one of those games you do need to put time into, mm -hmm. which uh, isn't perfect for me. But luckily, mm -hmm. I got on it early enough to be able to maintain that consistency. So, um, yeah, you don't need to know Hearthstone or even any of the lore from the previous games to jump on this game. And, um, yeah, it's it's super fun. It's different compared to other games, just like how Marvel Snap is as well. Yep. That's a nice segue into this video. So first question I have for you, how much do you know about Marvel Snap right now? What is your sort of knowledge base on the game? So based on um, the second that Ben announced that he was going to make a Marvel game, I knew that I had to try it no matter what, when it came out. That was like two years ago when mm. he left the Hearthstone team, I mm. believe, or maybe even four back in 2018. I perhaps. think it's longer than two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, as soon as he was going to announce a game, I definitely wanted to try it. And from that very first teaser video, I knew I needed to get on the website and sign up to the beta because I really wanted to play it. So, um, yeah, from actual knowing the game, I've, I've played a fair bit since since the beta's been out or the okay. closed beta, sorry. So, yeah, I know quite quite a bit considering okay. it's not even out yet. So, OK, so you're not you're not fresh to the game. This is not your first time seeing this game. You've, you've had sort of hands on experience, right? What, what level are you at right now? I'm currently on this season. So it's obviously every season they refresh. So I'm at yeah. 49 gold. So just under that platinum belt. OK, I'm only like three levels higher than you. And I just cannot get any higher than that. I'm just <laughs> I've, 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 oh. I've, I've bounced between 50 and 60 for like two weeks at this point. Yeah, I'm stuck as well. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's really, really competitive, really, I think. I'm Absolutely. No, it's great. It's great. And we were talking beforehand about the benefits of this game as you're a dad, I'm a dad, being able to play quick games, easy games on your phone. It's it's just so convenient. And that's that's what I love about it. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely convenient. So I want to do a little bit of comparison about like between this game and Mercenaries itself. So we did talk a little bit about the grindy nature of Mercenaries. You're probably fairly familiar with the progression track in this game. Having like a decent amount of experience in both, who do you feel or where do you feel is a grindier game? If that if that's a, an okay question to ask. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mercenaries is by far grindier. Mm. Um, the reason being is that you still have the ability to select or try to grind towards cards that you want. Or in Marvel Snap, it's completely different. Like mm. you can grind as much as you like, but you are going to get different cards to everybody else, mm. which is what I love about the game. You can play a deck that nobody else has even seen yet. Mm. Or if you're lucky enough to get the top meta cards that you're seeing everywhere, mm. then and, you know, it's just completely random. Other than the first initial 10 levels, they give you all the way up to Odin. Um, everything else is random, which is unique. You can't, like your previous video, you cannot pay to win this game. You mm. can pay to be, be better. Mm. You can get closer to those cards, but... Mm. 
you're no way in no way shape or form going to be able to better at the game just by obtaining the cards faster yeah okay so you love that about it. a lot of people don't like the fact that you can't get access to some card. like it might be dependent on like when you get the collector or when you get nova depends on when you can actually make a proper i won't say proper but a competitive deck for the people out there who are tryhards a lot of people don't like that aspect of the game where you know they want the card crafting mechanic you said a mercenary is there you can pick a specific hero that you want or mercenary excuse me uh that you want to like improve and and level up you can choose to actively work towards that level up am i right you, i am correct in yeah, that, yeah yeah, yeah you it, are yeah so in this game, in, in Snap though, you basically have no agency over what cards you might pull. So do you not feel that can be a little bit unfair at times? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you're a card player that is going not solely on fun and purely on competitive and trying to be the best at the game, then I could see how that has a, a really big effect on those play hard players. But mm. um, I feel that Second Dinner and Marvel Snap aren't going towards that competitive scene as much. I mm. think they want to get free to play player base mm. into the game more mm. so that you can just play the game and have a lot more fun. Mm. So um, it's definitely one of those that aren't trying to monetize it too much, mm. but at the same time, making everybody have a different experience, but at the same time, enjoy mm. the game. No, and I think they've made it clear to a certain degree that like everybody can get all the cards in the game. All you're doing when you're paying money is to kind of speed up the process as I showed in that as the video you alluded to. I'll put the link up exactly. there somewhere or somewhere up there. I can't remember. Thank you for that shameless plug. You know, I can see both sides of this argument. I can definitely see both sides of this argument. I, I do understand. And I think it's smart. It's a mobile first game. So like, you very like wisely put there it is a mobile first game and they want just more players in uh we talked about mercenaries being a little bit maybe more grindier than snap although i will say i'm you can see my screen there i'm at level 876 i found now that, that the rate in which i'm getting cards is getting further and further apart so it's de i'm definitely experience of slowdown and as we alluded to i spent 100 euro on this game getting you know speeding up that process so for me right now i do feel like this game is a bit of a i'm, I'm I'm enjoying the grind though. You know what I mean? I'm still I still have enough cards to make at least one or two semi compare if not you know once you have nova carnage and devil dino and moon girl you have probably one of the best decks in the game and you get most of those cards pretty early on after that though you kind of i'm tired of that deck so now i'm trying to i'm waiting for like the killmongers i'm looking for uh rogue you know all these all these cool counter cards to those meta decks but i definitely feel like i've reached a sort of grindier point but i actually don't mind grinding because ladder is kind of fun for me at the minute i'm enjoying that competitive thing i think that's kind of where the locations come into effect where it helps the grind a little bit more where yeah. every game even if you use the same deck mm. to back every single game all the way for a whole mm. season still going to feel so much different with those locations kind of having a little bit of a, a problem with the rotation of the locations i'm seeing frequent locations popping up even though they're not hot locations mm. Mm. would kind of like the game to change that a little bit where mm. for example the when you move a card from one location to another gain plus two um, power I'm, I'm seeing that a lot frequently and it's not even a hot location like mm. i would love to see no locations duplicated within like a two game period so like okay. want every other game to feel so different even if i'm using the same deck so yeah. that is definitely helping with the grind and using the same kind of deck because you kind of find one that is obviously your favorite and then um until you you unlock those other cards to play something else it yeah. still keeps the game fresh enough to be enjoyable that's a very good point one i hadn't really thought about probably one of the reasons why i am enjoying that grind so much is because of the fact that they have the either the featured locations or now you did mention that you are seeing a lot of the game there is only a small pool of locations of it. i'm not i'm not sure on the number do you know the number of cards uh, i know it's 60 on launch so i imagine it's just less than 60 from launch. yeah like i've gone I on don't... the snap plan and it's it's definitely um definitely less than 60. i don't think it's anywhere near 60 at the moment yeah. uh, and that's probably leading to like you said seeing the similar locations pop up over and over again i like the featured locations because it does then allow you to build tech cards you know into the deck you might have a deck that you're playing to the fact you know your favorite deck but you might have a few like cards that you might want to swap in swap out depending like shang chi was quite popular there recently when we had the, the monster island with the big nine cost or you know i've uh, um we have the uh the plus one energy a uh, super flow at the moment yeah and i've teched in uh professor x and he just locks down no one wants to play anything there so yep. you play it on turn four absolutely lock it down 
you've already won one location. All you have to do now is focus on the next yeah. one. I've seen people so put uh, great. I put I've seen people put hobgoblin in as well, which is a minus three yeah. on that location. So it goes over to you. Like you basically play it on your own location. It jumps into like your opponents, and now they have somebody in there you don't, and they also have minus three, oh, okay, which yeah. I think is a very very. And you do, and you play that on turn three. So for turns four, five, and six, you have one extra pa energy, and your opponent doesn't, which I think is just genius. I, I never I don't have that card, so I can't play that. So you know, oh, it, it's yeah. it's all that's, these that's you know that's the in. give and take there, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so the well, next I've, one... I've had that played against me, that Hobgoblin. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, um, I didn't think of it, me losing any energy from there, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's 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 a it's a really smart play. And then I maybe got... It, it, seeing plays like that makes you go back to the drawing board and look in your own collection and go, wait, what do I have that could also yeah. do something like this? Or maybe not that exact card, but something similar that, that, that disrupts my opponent. But yeah. again, I, lo I just love the creativity of players. Even with the limited enough card pool so far, like, a lot of players are being very creative with their decks. I, I really respect that. The next question I had was, what do you think mercenaries could learn from Snap? Is there anything you like in mercenaries, or sorry, in Snap, that you think mercenaries could adopt? They could definitely adopt the, um, need an in-game currency for mercenaries alone and not just gold for packs because packs just feel so weak. Mm. I kind of feel like they need to have another in-game currency where you can kind of like variants where if you're a collector and you want to get all of the variants or mercenaries, so all of the diamond portraits and all of the other portraits, they need to have something you can, instead of opening packs and obtaining them, mm. because packs are quite expensive in, in Hearthstone, mm. um, then like have a separate in-game currency, like an XP type thing, a reward mm. track or something where yeah. you get something via playing pve okay i would really like to see that nice nice and just really quickly on that do you play the pve mode or do you just play pvp or do you do you play both? uh you kind of have to play pve okay. um, to get your mercenaries to the level to play pvp no one wants to lose rating by playing a really mm. level one bad mercenary okay. in pvp so yeah. you have to play it a little bit just okay. to level up and, the, and what did the player base feel about that did they did they like that or did they think that's a bit of a pain uh well some people in the player base they actually prefer just the pve because mm. um pvp has been so broken because of a couple of buffs recently okay. um, to uh, a specific mercenary that is just in every single uh, composition. Okay. Uh, they 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 kind of prefer the PVE element of it. Okay. Um, my viewer base prefer PVP. Okay. Um, I've just done a meta report today actually, and mm. um, yeah, they definitely prefer seeing different pvp builds than the pve but that's just my uh, my viewers so okay no that's good to know um i'll leave a link to that video down below actually because uh awesome. people should definitely check that out and then on the flip side of that then what do you think snap could learn from from mercenaries i think snap are just doing a great job obviously they've had ben on their team uh, who was a, a hearthstone creator mm. um in the past so mm. I think he's taken all of the stuff that was good from Hearthstone and implemented it in Snap with mm. his game. Um, I don't think there's really anything from Mercenaries that they could take from it. I think like Mercenaries needs to look at Snap because mm. Snap is, like you like you said, we're in closed beta. We have a limited card pool and people mm. are having so much fun with this game just with a limited card pool. Mm. And the viewership might not be there yet because mm. people don't want to spoil it for themselves for when the game comes out. Mm. But once the game does come out, I think this game is going to blow up because yeah. of how well balanced it is good to hear and then we're already like i think they're already taking action on some of you talk about balance you know you talk about nova carnage it's everywhere people are playing it all the time although people are teching against it and people are learning what where people want to play that card those cards and, and teching against it last thing i really want to ask you there actually just kind of came up in my mind was the fact that the season pass is money you have to pay real money for it how do you feel about yeah. that how do you feel about that that aspect of I, I was actually surprised about that because mm. obviously the closed beta one was gold. Mm. I really enjoyed the fact that you can pay 500 gold. Um, and I'm going to kind of go off topic and go into a kind of like a Fortnite thing here. Sure. So Fortnite, you pay once and then you can obtain enough V-Bucks in that game to mm. obtain the next battle pass. So you only have to pay for it once. Sure, yeah. Marvel Snap does that where you pay the, the $8 or the £8 once. Mm then you gain enough during that reward track to be able to buy the next one with in-game currency. Mm. If Marvel Snap had that, I reckon that would be, mm. that would just blow up, I reckon. Yeah. Just yeah. being able to pay the once. If it had 10 millions 
of players you're just gonna you know you'll make your monetization you'll make your money plus you're you're giving what the players want that's a great but yeah i've often thought of that why more games don't do that you know that sort of yeah like you said pay once and if you play enough and if you grind enough, i mean i, I don't actually know how long it takes for you to grind in fortnite to, to get enough currency to pay for the following season but a lot of players who play fortnite like only play fortnite so i imagine most of them get that second third fourth and infinite amount of seasons am i correct yeah they actually um they've changed fortnite now where you get to choose the reward so once you've leveled up you earn battle stars and mm. those battle stars then you can choose to pay mm. for what you want on a page mm. and until you've unlocked enough rewards to get it i think you you only have to play it casually i play it casually with my kids mm. and each month i've i've got enough to be able to buy the next season that's so, um that's pretty cool and then as a casual player i think they should do that yeah and then i think they obviously then make more money by selling the skins and the, like, having yeah. the guest p heroes in there and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see. As I said, we're still in closed beta right now. Who knows what this game is going to be like when it goes into full launch? We, from what I understand, we're still several months away anyway. So we're probably yeah. playing a final version for the closed beta for, for the foreseeable future. I think it might be, you know, I'm not expecting to see massive changes in this game from what the version we're playing right now. Yeah, I mean, we have the new season in, what, eight days, is it? So yeah. I imagine they'll do like a, a Thor or love and thunder and mm -hmm. that will probably be the last one for mm. for close beta yep or at and least I'm... until they bring out some more uh <laughs> more regions i and i'm definitely not reaching infinite in that those last few days uh i will no, definitely be no, back no. down to rank 20 and we'll start all <laughs> over again thank you very much crimson panda for jumping on this video with me i genuinely really appreciate it i know we've messaged several times this is the first time we've ever spoken person together but we've messaged back and forth for probably years you know through through hearthstone yeah. and things like it's that awesome, and, yeah. and 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 so so it's really great to chat to you um before we jump off have you got any specific video you'd like to plug that you'd like to me to put in the link down below so people should go and check out that maybe gives people a good flavor of who you are and what you create with the mercenary scene yeah sure so i'll, um, I'll leave a link in the description or for you to leave in the link in, yeah uh, in i'll, I'll do it <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> and, uh, yeah i mean like um specifically would be um just just like a an updated farming guide for new players that want to jump on the mercenary scene uh, if they need help with any hmm. builds or stuff like that like a meta video perhaps that would um that would really help so yeah i'd say i'd say anybody watching this video that's interested in mercenaries should definitely go and check out that farming build uh, to get you off the ground if if, if you want to if you want another another free to play you know game that's going to take <laughs> over your life yeah go for it uh, good for you all right thank you very much for watching the video guys make sure you hit like and subscribe if you got this far and uh, go check out crimson panda's channel as well and i will see you or we will see you well no you won't see them in the next video but i'll see you in the next video bye be in the chat. <laughs> <laughs>